Ahoy there, friends. Today is day two of my Disney cruise on the Disney Wonder. So let's go have some fun today on Catalina Island. Let's go do this. I did wake up fairly early and had trouble falling back asleep and it's weird because with the time change that just happened last week the Sun has not risen yet Wow that's right it's not gonna rise until 648 is the official sunrise time to this morning and I got up about five o'clock I was one of the first people up on the board up on the ship but I went up and got a coffee because they do have coffee on tap anytime you want to grab that which is a really nice perk so I walked around the ship a little bit, got some steps in, came back and took a shower and got ready this morning. And we're gonna do cabanas for breakfast this morning. I wanna try out the breakfast buffet. I usually love breakfast buffets. I like to have a huge variety for the morning and I'm gonna get some hash browns and eggs and see what else they have on offer there. So let's go to breakfast pretty soon. They do not open until 7 a.m., which I was surprised about. I expected them to be open at 6 a.m. I would have went and got breakfast already, but I'm just waiting until seven rolls around so I can grab some food. And the dining room doesn't open until 8 a.m. if you wanna do a sit-down breakfast. So I'm not gonna wait for that. I need to meet at 10.15 for my shore excursion. So I'm gonna just hang out this morning and get breakfast first and get some more coffee and let's get our day started. about 10 years since I've been to Catalina Island and this might be a separate town I can't remember there's two towns only in on Catalina Island so let's go grab some breakfast there's not going to be much of a sunrise this morning the sun is starting to come up but as you can see the fog is hugging over the mountain there it looks really pretty but there's not going to be much of a sunrise because of the fog cover so let's go grab some breakfast Just got done with breakfast and they had a huge variety. I went to Cabana's, which is the buffet, and the breakfast buffet was awesome. Really, really stellar. It does get very busy, so I'm glad I got there really early. I was one of the first ones in the buffet, so I was able to film things without being in people's way. So I did film all the food in there too, just to show you guys. When I first walked in, I noticed they had a lot of porridge, oatmeal, rice. They had a mushroom soup. So I knew it was going to be a good variety just right off the bat because I could tell they had a lot of different types of foods just walking in. They had eggs, eggs benedict, scrambled eggs, sausage, potatoes, they had uh, biscuits and gravy, they had breakfast potatoes like home fries that looked really good. I did not try those though. I tried a lot of things but I didn't try those. They had already toasted bagels, they had toast. The fruit section was really nice. They had watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew, yogurts, cereals, and lots and lots of toppings. So if you wanted any toppings for your oatmeal, they had all kinds of dried fruit. They had lots of different toppings and assortment of toppings that you could put onto things. It was really well thought out and they had a lot of different options. I was really, really impressed. The pastry options were pretty good. They had donuts, they had muffins, different types of loaves like it looks like a lemon loaf they had. And most importantly, they had Mickey waffles, which are amazing. They also had different types of pancakes, blueberry pancakes, chocolate chip pancakes, regular pancakes, French toast. They had lox, if you wanted bagels and lox, they had some smoked salmon. They had a lot of different cold cuts. They had a whole cooler of cold cuts and parfaits that you could choose from. If you wanted a English style breakfast, they had baked beans and tomatoes for that, fried eggs with steak, and they had pre-made omelets. They had lots of different yogurt over by the fruit, and I really liked the assortment of juice they had too, things to drink for the morning. You could get milk, you could get orange juice, cranberry juice, or apple juice, 
of course water and they had coffee and they'd come around and serve you coffee if you'd like that but there's also self-service coffee up there too and here's a look at some of the other food options that they had they had a lot of food like i said a huge variety i was really really impressed i didn't expect to see this much food there the only thing they didn't have was an omelet making station which a lot of cruise ships have but i didn't miss it because they had plenty of egg options there it was still sufficient and i like eating eggs for breakfast they had the fried eggs, which were really nice. They had scrambled eggs. The scrambled eggs were like your mass-produced buffet eggs. They were kind of on the runny side, and they might be a powdered egg. I'm not really sure exactly what they are, but they're definitely not like your typical scrambled eggs. They're the kind you'd find at like a hotel buffet, which I actually like. A lot of people don't like those. I love those kind of eggs, so for me, that wasn't a problem at all. I got a nice table overlooking Avalon, and I could see there wasn't really a visible sunrise, but it got lighter and lighter as I ate because I was there at 7 a.m. I actually got there at 6.50 a.m. and they were already open. And they do have you wash your hands when you enter, which is really nice. I'm glad they ask everybody to wash their hands before handling the tongs. So that's really helpful. And the cast members, the crew members were super, super friendly. I got at least 30 good mornings from the crew members. Every crew member you passed said, good morning and how are you? And it was just really nice. It was a nice sentiment. I appreciated that. They definitely go above and beyond to make you feel welcome and to try to start your day off right. And they're there to help you if you need anything. They came over and offered to grab me things or if the food was all right. I was approached at the table multiple times by multiple crew members, so I thought that was really nice. They're doing a really good job. I got a plate of a little bit of everything. I had the blueberry pancake, which was really good. I was actually really surprised. The Mickey waffle was superb. 10 out of 10, no notes. I love Mickey waffles, those are awesome really really good the sausage was the same sausage that you get at red rose tavern in disneyland and it's the thick pieces of sausage i really like that it's good with syrup especially i got a huge variety of fruit i got watermelon pineapple and cantaloupe because i like eating fruit in the morning i got a lot of food i was hungry this morning you know you might as well it's all included so you can eat as much as you'd like i didn't waste any of the food i got so it, you know but if if you just take a bite of things and you don't like something you can go get something else. A lot of people do leave food behind and that's not an issue either. It's your cruise, you can do what you want with it. The hash browns were awesome. I love the hash browns. The hash browns were like tater tots pretty much in a triangular form. They were really tender and potatoey on the inside, but they were crispy and delicious on the outside. Those were super, super good. I love hash browns in general, but those hash browns were awesome. I'd get those again for sure. Anything on the plate that I had, I would absolutely get again. I enjoyed all of it. I liked that they had little ramekins to put your sauce in. The scrambled eggs were good. They just need salt and pepper like all scrambled eggs need. And I really enjoyed those. I actually really liked the runny buffet style eggs. Like I said, to me, that's not a problem. A lot of people steer away from those types of eggs. That's, you know, it's to each their own, but I like those eggs. I think they're really good and I had a little raspberry danish. That was really good. I thought it'd be kind of like one of those prepackaged danishes, but it had a really nice raspberry flavor to it, and it tasted really fresh. And I went back and got a second plate, just a little more, just a tiny bit more. Not a lot of food on this second plate. I got the biscuits and gravy. I love biscuits and gravy. I'm a huge biscuits and gravy fan. These biscuits and gravy were just uh, underwhelming. They were exactly what you'd expect from a buffet biscuit and gravy. The biscuit itself was a little dried out and the gravy lacked flavor. It seemed like it had a lot of sausage, but it didn't really have a lot of sausage flavor to it at all. It just kind of tasted like wet nothing. And it wasn't bad, but it was exactly what you'd pretty much expect from a buffet style biscuits and gravy that are mass produced. They weren't bad, they were just a little disappointing. I was expecting a little more from those since I love biscuits and gravy. I wouldn't get those again necessarily. And I got one of the glazed donuts. And the donut was pretty darn good. It wasn't like your donut shop type donut. It was a little different, but it was pretty darn good. I definitely get that again. And I just got a little more fruit. I really enjoyed the juice. A lot of times on cruises, the juice is really weak, really watered down. The apple juice and the orange juice were actually really, really good. So I'm surprised that those were included with the cruise fare and not an upcharge. But 
I am very full. I'm going to relax now until I have to get to my tender. My meeting time is at 10.15 and then I will go ash ashore. It's about an hour and a half excursion. So I'm going to come back onto the ship after that. Probably not really going to walk around Avalon much. Just do my excursion and come back because I do want to take advantage of some of the activities on board. I want to try to do trivia and I'd like to do bingo at some point too. There's Today there is a $2,500 jackpot bingo, so I'd like to try to do that if I can. So I want to come back on the ship early enough. So for now, I'm going to go hang out in the rainforest room. I'm going to use the saunas and the hot tub and stuff. I haven't been in there yet, so I want to go in and check in and change into my swimsuit. And they do have changing rooms at the spa, so you just bring your stuff with you and you can change there. So I'm going to go relax and hang out for a little bit and then get ready for my excursion. see a little bit of sunlight peeking through some blue skies trying to poke through right above the casino over there there's dolphins look at them Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on board the Seawolf to the pier right now. In a few minutes, we're going to head back upstairs to untie the boat and help the captain get us away from the Over five minutes to get there. So the first five minutes or so of the trip, you're not going to see a whole lot outside of the windows. Uh, in fact, even less than what we're seeing now under the pier here. But, but don't worry, once we get to the viewing area, everything will start to appear. Adi will, at that point, come down to point out some of the marine life, some of the stuff we're looking at, potentially answering questions for you guys. There's some kelp there. This is really cool. I'm loving this so far already. Um, they're going to take us to an ecological reserve and then we're going to look at more fish once we stop. to Nova School. This cove is a marine protected area. It is worn out of marine from out here in Catalina Island. Marine preserve means there's no fishing, trapping or netting or any kind of hunting that is allowed around here. It has been this way since June 1960. Right now we are making our way to our first feeding location. We have some dressing spot that we'll be visiting today. We'll be seeing multiple species of fish through the tree. 
I'll give you some more info about them as you go around. Wow. You can see these guys are pretty friendly. They will come up to the windows and say hi. We like to give them some snacks whenever we are out here. So right now, I'm going to head up and give these guys some snacks. And when I come back, I'll give them, I'll give you some more info about them. Thank you. This is absolutely incredible. It's like the Nemo submarine ride. Oh, Garibaldi's. See those orange ones? Those are the Garibaldi's. Wow, look at it. <laughs> they come right up to the water, to the window. They want snacks. They're going to chum so that uh, it attracts more fish. So apparently these fish are trained to know that they come out here and chum because they obviously know we have food for them. Wow. Oh, there they go. They're getting fed. He's throwing chum right now from the top, I'm sure. So they're all swarming for it. This is incredible. This is a really incredible experience. Wow. Yeah, look at all that food. It's amazing to be in a kelp bed like that. A kelp forest. That is incredible. I've never done this before, and this is really, really amazing. A big ocean lover growing up in a beach city, uh, you know, makes you have a certain appreciation for the ocean. But this is making me have even deeper appreciation. This is amazing. I can see the half moon fish out. There's one right there. I think a lot of these are calico bass, like that one's a calico bass, the Garibaldi's. Isn't the Garibaldi the state fish of California, actually? I believe it is. Oh, there's a half moon. Look at this calico bass, they come right up to the window. That is incredible. I love how we're just immersed in the kelp bed, the kelp forest. This is so cool, it's like we're just part of it. This is like a spiritual experience, this is amazing. Wow. This is a must do for nature lovers. Alright, I'm back again. Is there anyone who has not seen fish on this trip? <laughs> okay, so if you guys look out, you'll see a grayish green fish with a white spot on their back. Those guys is called opuli. They get that name because their eyes are blue in color.
right, that was a 10 out of 10 experience. That was amazing. That was way better than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, I didn't have low expectations. I definitely had high hopes for it, but that surpassed any expectations I could have had. That was so much fun, wow. So they outfitted this like boat to look like a submarine and it kind of worked like a submarine. It was partially submersed so we could see out the windows and see the fish in the kelp forest as we went through. I didn't expect to see so many thousands and thousands upon thousands of fish. I thought we'd see a couple of fish here and there. That was really, really, really spectacular. I mean, I can't even put it into words. I'm, I'm awestruck still. Awe is such a good thing to have in this life and this world. It's a rare thing to get sometimes, you know? But awe is really good for your mental health and I am still in awe. I am absolutely awestruck. That was so special. I mean, wow, I cannot, I can't even put it into words at all. I can't even express how much joy that makes me feel. That was such an amazing excursion. They explained a little bit about the fish that we were seeing and there were posters that I liked a lot of all the different fish. I did ask the Garibaldi is the California state fish, the saltwater state fish, and it is a $1,500 fine. If you're caught fishing them and you're caught with one, it is a $1,500 fine because they are a protected species. And we went into ecological protected reserves, so that was really neat. That was just mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing. I love the ocean. Like I said, growing up in a beach city, you have a deeper appreciation for the ocean. Wow, that's hard to say, but it's, it's amazing. I appreciated that experience more than I can even express. That was so, so awesome. It's super sunny out now. It's really warm and nice, so I can't stay out for too long because I didn't bring my sunscreen, unfortunately. I didn't expect it to be sunny and warm, and I did not bring a hat either, but I'm gonna hang out in Avalon for a little bit. It's just such a cute, picturesque little town, and I'm gonna explore the town, just look through some of the gift shops, but I do wanna enjoy the ship. That's the problem. It's, you know, it's a double-edged sword here because you wanna enjoy the ship, but you also wanna enjoy the ports. But I only have a couple more days on the ship, so I wanna do as much as I can on board. So I'm gonna head back as soon as I possibly can, but I'll probably stay here for about an hour and just try to enjoy it for the next hour. Beautiful day today, 10 out of 10 experience. What more could you ask for? I mean, look at this background here, so awesome. Catalina is a beautiful island and Avalon is a beautiful little town. I'm very appreciative to be here. I feel very lucky today. Such a cute little town. I like walking through here and just ex exploring and seeing the sights. All right, so I'm back on the ship now. It was a pretty good, easy tender boat ride over. And the tender boats are really big. They're a lot larger than I expected them to be. Much, much larger. They're very smooth and it was only like a five minute boat ride to get back. And we're gonna go grab some lunch. Tiana's is still open for 30 more minutes. So I'm gonna go to Tiana's for lunch after this. I just got done with lunch at Tiana's place and it was pretty good overall. It was an underwhelming menu. It was pretty basic, which is fine. They didn't have a lot of variety and most of the choices were pretty normal things. Hamburgers, pasta, stuff like that. Meatloaf, which is what I had for lunch. I started out with the chicken tortilla soup and the soup was very good. It was one of my favorite parts of the meal. It was really heavy on the tomato base and it was primarily a tomato soup with tortilla soup flavors to it. So it was kind of a little bit spicy, not spicy hot, but spiced with like chili peppers. I liked the fried tortilla strips on top. Those were really yummy. And then I had a salad, just a regular romaine salad. It came with cherry tomatoes and onions, and you gotta choose the dressing that you wanted on the side of it. That was very good. Just a basic salad though, nothing fancy about it, no frills. The chicken, however, that came with the salad was completely unseasoned. There wasn't even salt and pepper on it, which I thought was kind of odd. And the chicken was only like partially cut. It was scored on the top, but it wasn't cut through. So it was kind of weird to have to cut your own chicken and put it on the salad. So I kind of just skipped that little bit. It just was really bland chicken. It was just like roasted or braised chicken that was completely bland. The meatloaf was good. I liked the meatloaf a lot. The sauce that came with it was really nice. The mashed potatoes were good that came with the meatloaf. I really enjoyed those. The carrots though were not cooked, which is really weird. They were just peeled and heated carrots. One thing I've noticed is all the vegetables that I've had so far, 
the broccoli, the green beans, the carrots, the cauliflower, it's all been just heated through. So they don't really cook their vegetables, which is fine. I like raw vegetables, but it's kind of odd to have warm, but partially raw vegetables. They're mostly raw, actually. They're like all crunchy in the center and they're just warmed on the outside pretty much. They're not very cooked at all, which is not a problem for me, but some people might, might not like that that much. And dessert was amazing. I had a molten cake that was super decadent. Oh my gosh, it was so rich. It was for the chocolate lovers. I am a chocolate lover, so I really, really, really enjoyed that. Oh my gosh, was it rich though. Holy cow, that thing was delicious. Bury me in that chocolate sauce when I'm dead. That was so good. It was really, really good. And I also got a pecan pie, which was not your traditional pecan pie, which usually it's a corn syrup that holds the pecan pie together. This was a very crumbly pecan pie. It was really good. It just was not your usual pecan pie, but I really enjoyed it. Dessert was like my favorite part of the whole meal. I am very full though. Really good lunch. I like having these sit down lunches. So tonight I'm going to Tiana's again for dinner. Actually, that's my rotational dinner for tonight. And it's funny to eat at Tiana's three times on this cruise so far. So it was a good lunch. I really enjoyed it. Nothing I had was bad at all, but maybe tomorrow I'll try out Cabana's buffet for lunch instead, just to have a little more variety and try something that's a little more unusual than just meatloaf, hamburgers, or pasta. Also, when I got back from my room at lunch, this was on my door and it's really cute. I like the Disney magic that people try to spread around the ship. It's such a wholesome community. Disney fans are some of the most wholesome people. Just little things like this though. It really did put a big smile on my face. It said, you've been pixie dusted, made by magic, by faith and hunter, eight and six. How cute is that? Look at, they gave me a little Mickey. They're putting these on different people's doors through the hallway. It's really nice of them. And I got a nice little Mickey sticker on there too. How cute. They gave me a little pack of Haribo gummy bears, the little tiny baby gummy bears. <laughs> I'm gonna try out bingo, so wish me luck. I got the electronic bingo cards, so fingers crossed. It'll be fun either way though. I don't expect to win, I'm just here for the good time. As expected, I did not win at bingo. I was very close though. Was one number off a couple of times, but you know, that's the way it goes. It was still fun. And I did a trivia, it was a general knowledge trivia. It was bizarre because the questions seemed to be either pretty easy or very, very difficult. There was almost like no in between there. I joined another couple to make a team, which was good because I wouldn't have done quite as well on my own. We got 12 out of 20. The winner had 18 out of 20 correct questions. So bravo to them, hats off to them. That is incredible. I can't believe they got 18 of them right. It was a, some of the questions were very, very difficult. Like about 10 of the questions were very difficult. So I'm very, very surprised that they got 18 total. But trivia was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. So tonight we are going to Tiana's Palace. This will be my third time, but I'm going there for dinner tonight. It'll be a bit of a dinner show too. They have jazz music. Tiana will make an appearance. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I just got done watching the Frozen musical spectacular. It was incredible, absolutely incredible. It really made me miss the Frozen show that we used to have at Disney California Adventure. I've seen that more times than I care to admit in the like, upwards of like the dozens, like probably towards a hundred times. Cause it's a good air conditioning break too. When you were walking around the park, it was always a nice midday break. And I just got in the habit of watching the Frozen show. And I love Frozen, no shame in that. I love the music in it. I think it's a great storyline, but I love theater in general. So watching the musical theater version of it is even better than the movie to me. This did not disappoint. This was amazing. Broadway level show. The sets, the cast, the ensemble was a small ensemble. The number of costume changes that they had to make and the characters that they all played, each ensemble member played like three or four characters throughout the show. It was really incredible. How they can find this talent and put them on a cruise ship is beyond me. I mean, this was an, a, this was an absolutely outstanding 10 out of 10 show. The crowd was cheering and roaring at the end. It was really fun, absolutely spectacular. I mean, it was so entertaining. The singers were all fabulous. The acting was great. The sets were great. The lighting design, the sound design, everything that was put into it was amazing. Coming from a stage management perspective, I was very, very impressed. I'm always in tune to the tech and how things are working, the set pieces, things like that, the properties, the costumes. I like watching all the behind the scenes and I had a seat where I could kind of see off the stage 
into the wings a little bit. That was truly fascinating. I could see when they were pulling the scrims and I liked how they had hydraulic automated set pieces that would move themselves. It was really impressive, really well done, really, really well done. They got a standing ovation at the end, a very well-deserved standing ovation. It was amazing. It was really fabulous. I love the entertainment on the ship. That's been one of my favorite parts so far is the crew members and the entertainment. That's why I think anybody would come back to Disney Cruise Line is just to have the crew members that are fantastic and the fantastic level of entertainment that you get on here too. But anyways, let's go to dinner and I'll show you guys what I'm going to eat tonight and then we'll call it a night. I'm very tired. It was a nice, long, fun day, but I'm looking forward to the end of the night too. Okay, Mickey was just roaming around and he grabbed my friend's hands and he's now escorting them by the arm. He gave me a big hug too. Oh, Mickey. What a dapper gentleman. How cute. <laughs> All right, so it is very late now. I had such a fun evening tonight. Oh my gosh, I had the most fun. I haven't had this much fun in a long time. It was really, really great. I just got done with Tiana's dinner earlier. Tiana's was nice. I really loved the live entertainment while you're eating. It was really nice. They had jazz music playing, a pianist, and a stand-up bass, and it was just really lovely. Tiana would come out and talk for a little bit, which was cool. I thought her costume was amazing, and it was really hard to see because anytime Tiana talked, there was two giant pillars in the center of the restaurant that I was seated behind. So unfortunately for me, I really couldn't see the stage much, but it sounded really nice. For some reason too, our tables got moved around tonight. Usually you're at the same table number each night. And I ended up with the two girls that I had met the first day on the cruise. So we, we sat together tonight for dinner, which is really funny. Some of the tables looked a little different, so I'm not sure what had happened or why they switched around the tables, but it worked in our favor. It was really fun. We had good conversation throughout the meal. Since I couldn't see the stage, you know, at least I had someone to talk to the whole time. And they're very nice girls. It was just so fun to have dinner with them. Really liked that. We would we went around the table and like said, what's your favorite Disney movie? And just had a great conversation the entire meal, which was really nice. It really added to the experience for me. We did not get to say hi to Tiana. She skipped our table, probably because we're all adults, which is fine. I'm glad she gets to the kids first, and she just doesn't have enough time to come to each and every table. So she did skip by our table, but it was a little frustrating for us. Well, I shouldn't say frustrating. It was a little disappointing for us. We all did want to say hi to Tiana, and you know we would have just ha gladly just had a little like, hi, how's the meal? Really quick interaction would have been nice, but I understand they can't get to everybody. They do, they do the best they can, and I'm sure they prioritize children which is what they should do. That's the way it should work anyways. I can always say hi to Tiana at Disneyland. I did not do any of the character meets yet, and I don't think I will for the rest of the cruise because the lines are very, very long to meet the characters. And I can meet any of the characters at Disneyland, obviously anytime <laughs> as somebody that goes twice a week, it's a little less important for me to meet the characters on the ship. But I do like their costumes a lot on the ship, and at least I can admire their costumes from a distance without having to meet them. I love their little sailor outfits, especially Chippendale. Daisy looks adorable. Donald, too. It would be nice to say hi, but I'm not going to wait 30 to 45 minutes. And I kind of feel rude as an adult by myself. I know a lot of people kind of frown upon adults meeting characters, and I don't really want to have a bad interaction like that. Already the first night that I was to, uh, eating lunch, someone sat next to me and the guy loudly, obviously in a performative manner, said it so that I would hear. And he's like, why would an adult come without children onto a cruise? Because obviously I was seated alone and it was just kind of like, mm, not the nicest thing to say. You know, if you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say it at all would probably be applicable in this situation. But some people just don't have a filter. So I know it's bizarre that what they call us Disney adults, you know, have a kind of bad reputation to people that aren't super into Disney. But I just say, don't yuck somebody's yum. We're into what we're into. Disney makes me happy and there's nothing more to it. I love Disneyland. I've always liked Disney stuff. And Disneyland's my happy place. And Disney brings me a lot of joy in general. It's the highlight of my life. So you can't help what you're passionate about. You have to be you. 
you know, sometimes it takes a little courage to be yourself, and that's just who I am, obviously. All my shirts that I brought on this cruise have Mickey on them. That's just how I am. I love Disney, and I always will, and I, I'm not embarrassed to say that. <laughs> but I understand it's not everyone's cup of tea, so I didn't want to kind of rudely... I didn't want people to think I was rude meeting the characters by myself and taking up time when the children could be taking the time to meet them instead. But dinner was amazing experience oh my gosh the food was okay um, I had fritters sausage fritters those I wouldn't get again they were weird they were just mushy texturally on the inside fairly fr fairly flavorless they just take tasted kind of like a fried ball of nothing they weren't terrible they were definitely edible and I ate them but I wouldn't get those again for sure and then I got a wedge salad which my friend also got the wedge salad it was totally plain it was a chunk of iceberg lettuce cut with a little bit of Thousand Island drizzled on it. I think it needed a little more dressing and it had bacon. It would have been nice if it had like egg and some more toppings on it, some cucumbers, maybe some carrots. I usually love a wedge salad, but this wedge salad was pretty underwhelming. It wasn't bad. I definitely ate the whole thing. But the best meal I think I've had so far on the ship was my entree. That was the prime rib. Very, very good cut of prime rib. You can order it to your preference. I ordered medium. And I did have to cut off the fatty bits. Obviously, with all prime rib, you get big chunks of fat on it. That's just how it comes. It came with a nice au jus reduction sauce. It was like a thicker au jus, and it was really yummy. And I asked for horseradish on the side, and the horseradish makes the meal. To me, horseradish is just chef's kiss. Like, that was really, really good. I've always loved prime ribs. That's a hard one to mess up for me, and I really enjoyed that. That was the best thing, the highest quality thing I ate. And it came with a twice-baked potato, but honestly, the potato just tasted like potato. It didn't taste like anything of any kind. There was no, like, cream or butter or cheese mixed into it that you could taste. It needed a little bit of seasoning. Maybe some garlic would be nice. And speaking of seasoning, every vegetable that we've had on this ship has been very, very lightly cooked, just heated through. It's very odd. The girls were saying that, too. All the broccoli, the broccoli rob that I had, the, the I think it was either broccoli rob or broccolini that I had tonight. The cauliflower, the carrots, everything that we've been served, the green beans, have been pretty raw. And unfortunately, they're just steamed. I wish they would kind of toss them in a little bit of butter or maybe some garlic just for flavor. A little bit of seasoning would be nice. I haven't had a single vegetable on board that's not bland and I like vegetables I like trying to eat vegetables every day so I definitely ate mine I finished them but it would be nice to just have a little bit more flavor in that regard you know you can put salt and pepper on them but there's only so much that salt and pepper can do and the twice baked potato I could live without but the prime rib itself was amazing and then for dessert I tried the bread pudding and the bread pudding tasted like a creme brulee it was really really good one of the best desserts I've had so far other than the molten chocolate cake this has been my favorite dessert so far it was really really delicious the beignets were okay they weren't Mickey beignets they were not hollow in the center like Mickey beignets how they're usually really airy they were more just like regular beignets uh, they were more like regular donuts, kind of like a donut hole. It reminded us of donut holes. We all agreed on that. And the chocolate sauce that came with it was okay. I liked the beignets better actually without the chocolate sauce. But I'm glad I got two desserts because that's always fun. After dinner, we went to a trivia sort of thing where they'd play the song. They play a song from either a movie, an attraction, or a TV show that's Disney. And you had to guess the attraction and the song name or the movie and the song name. And it was very, very difficult. We did not win, but it was fun to play with the girls. At least I had team members to play with. And, you know, it was just a fun night. We had we were laughing and having a great time. And then it started getting late, and I thought about going to bed. But they had frozen phrases, and the girls asked if I wanted to join them again for frozen phrases. And since they invited me, I, I didn't want to say no. And obviously, I'm, obviously I did want to go, but I didn't kind of want to crash their plans and invite myself. So I'm really glad they invited me. That was really nice of them. And Frozen Phrases was a lot of fun. You had to get people to guess the uh, charades, basically. And then the end, the winning team got to do a $1,000 pyramid type game where it was like things that Olaf would say, things that are cold, things that Elsa would do. And you have to keep saying different words to get them to guess that phrase. It was a lot of fun. Our team won, and that was really, really fun. That was like really awesome. Then we were all gonna go to bed, 
and we kind of hovered around. We stood up and hovered around the entrance of the lounge and noticed that karaoke was starting and the girls wanted to watch the karaoke. So I joined them for that and it was fun. It was just almost all kids and families doing karaoke and it was cute. There were a lot of cute little performances and it was just a fun night and everybody in the audience was singing along to the karaoke as well. So we were singing to Wicked and Taylor Swift songs and Disney songs. It was great. I seriously had so much fun tonight. I am pooped. I need to get a good night's sleep because last night I did not rest that well. I need to get some really good solid sleep tonight. So I'm going to put in my earplugs and I'm going to crash. I'm going to wash my face and I'll be asleep in like 15 minutes from now. But thank you guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for joining for day two on the Disney Wonder. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for day three. We're going to be in Ensenada, Mexico. And I'm not going to get on the sh off the ship in Ensenada. I'm just going to stay on board. So until next time, thank you guys. I'll see you.